Another successful run in the bag. Welcome back. Look at the colour of this wing. It incredibly matches the ocean in Fiji. I don't know how they do it. I'm always using the 2.8 meter PPC now. It's the perfect size for what I do. If it's light conditions it gets me out. And in the bigger conditions it still gets me out. Being only 2.8 meters, this wing is super quick to pump up and even quicker to break down. I've got about two minutes now before I paddle up, so I might as well talk about my equipment a little bit. Having the smaller 2.8 meter PPC wing makes it easier to handle out in the water. I'm typically keeping my wing crispy dry, and if you're trying to battle with a big wing, chances are you're going to be dunking it a little bit. That leads me to my dry bag. I use a bigger dry bag than most other people. I find having a bigger bag makes getting the wing into the bag super easy and again it's less handling on the water. The other benefit of the big dry bag is when it's on your back having a big airy package is really unnoticeable. I found when I was using a 35 litre dry bag, the package felt much tighter and I could feel the weight shifts against my back throwing me off balance. The weight difference between a 55 litre bag and a 35 litre bag is basically zero. It's a little bit, but it contains all the same straps and pockets and it's only a little bit more material. The space itself doesn't weigh anything. As you can see, it only takes me about two minutes now to pack down my gear. And that it really is because of this bigger dry bag. Along with the PPC wing, I've got a PPC paddle there. And otherwise, I'm on all axis gear. It's a prototype board. It's not for sale, but we're just trying to work on some different shapes at the moment. Foil wise, I have the 1180, which is a beautiful foil for this kind of run. It has great low end, but still turns really well. And I can't believe it's the biggest foil in this range. I could get up to my feet here. And I found like the peak that I want straight away. Having the low end of that foil makes getting up on foil from paddling really easy. But you'll see the job's not over. Once you get up on foil, you have to stay on foil. And sometimes this takes quite a bit of energy, just paddling and pumping until you find yourself. Somewhere to get in sync. My job now really is to find something steep where I can start to relax. And from that position, I can start scanning the ocean for my next zone. Finding a peak generally means that it's going to pull a trough behind it, and that's the easiest way to locate energy in the ocean I find. At the same time right now I'm shifting my feet around and trying to feel the forces through the foil and through my board. I have a terrible habit of standing too far forward on my board, really giving my front foot too much leverage over the pitch control. This leaves my back leg to be doing a lot of the, the work keeping my body stabilised. Right now you can see I've gotten comfortable and I'm starting to do little turns just to feel out the system. My girlfriend and I joke that we forget about how to foil between each session. So the start of each session really is learning how to foil again. It's a bit of a joke, but there's a truth to it because you're never standing in the exact same spot. The water's never quite the same. There's so many differentials when you're foiling. The good thing is though, the more experienced you get, 
the quicker you can relearn how to foil. This is when downwinding gets super fun. You can just start doing turns in the ocean. I find surfing in the waves requires so much work when you have to pump back to the next wave. If you can bring that experience to the downwinding, it's a far easier job for the body to achieve. Now I've got a good feel for my system. I'm really just looking for steep sections to perform a turn. If you try to turns just using your own knowledge, often it doesn't quite work out. But the ocean's a beautiful place, and if you can sync up your turns with the contours of the ocean, you'll find that your turns are functional, but they are also beautiful. Sometimes you just have to pump. What I'm doing while I'm pumping along there is again looking for a valley or a bowl that I can perform turns in. There's a real skill being able to perform these turns and making sure that you finish it up on positive energy. It's like kind of surfing on a wave where you want to finish your turn on a high point. We've talked about it before, but you really want to keep low points around you because that's the energy that you can go into. If you finish up your turn in the bottom of a trough, well then how are you going to get back to a high point? I'm running a bit slower here. That's the beauty of these well-rounded foils. I can go fast and slow. And having the ability to go slow gives me a bit of a break to find the next energy. I can see there that a big swell has passed under me and that's great because I know that it's going to pull a trough behind it and I can tow into that thing. Anytime you can see big energy in the water, you know that you're eventually going to get some. If you're scanning the ocean and can't see any high points or low points, Chances are you're in for a tough run. I just saw myself touch down there. It really winds me up now. Touching down isn't the end of the world, but it breaks momentum and it has to be replaced somehow. If you're in a steep section, it's not so bad, but if you touch down in the flats, you've got to do a lot of work to get your mast height back. Right now, this ocean is a playground. This is downwinding at its best. You can see the energy close by, and you can do whatever you want knowing that you can make it to that energy dense spot. That often gives me the confidence to try to do bigger and harder turns knowing that if I kind of screw it up, there's energy there to save me. It looks like a nice bit of energy that's just passed under me. I know that energy is going to pull a trough behind it, and that allows me to sit just near that trough and utilize it. Again there, you can see the bump in front of me pulling away. Well, that pulls this trough behind it, and if I'm on the sharp end of that trough, it's going to pull me behind it too. That shows me now that my foil is just a little bit slower than the ocean, but that's fine because I'm happy to pump to speed up at the top end. If I have a fast foil, I don't want to be pumping at the low end in a state of panic because I can't go slow. I'd rather have a bigger slower foil that I have to pump at the top end because that means when I'm in in difficulty or struggling at, at a lower speed, that foil foils there for me. 
If I have to bump it a little bit at the top end to match the pace of these bumps, that's fine. There's always mixed feelings when I get towards the end of a run like this. I'm happy to have successfully done the run, but also I wish that it could keep going. You can see the colour change in the water here. It really is showing me that it's getting shallower. And that there is getting much shallower. You really need to avoid these reefs. I'm getting pretty versed now and getting coming in through this reef and there is actually only one pa passageway and it's quite narrow. That reef really has stopped all the energy coming through to the inside. So now this is basically flat water pumping. Doing a couple of paddle strokes with your pumps is a great way to save your legs. It probably isn't great for learning perfect technique. You can see the drone pilot here is really getting better. Some of these shots are amazing. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really does help me stay stoked and supports the channel. I'd highly recommend you go check out more of my vids. See you on the next one.